I just had my first solo show in a decade and it was really good. I guess it's time to start recapping. It's been an incredible experience and everything went as well as I could have hoped for. The opening was incredible and I want to take you through the last of the work that I made, preparations, how the opening went, and share a lot of documentation, photos, things from the last few months of working on this. I have the collection available for purchase through my website, robinsealark.com, and it's viewable in person Monday through Friday, nine to five at Wow Atelier in downtown Salt Lake City. So you can see it, you could pick up artwork from there directly. I am excited to just show you what all happened. Enjoy this update and uh, my new hair. To stay updated, please follow my Instagram. I'm active there and on Patreon as well. I would love to have some new members. We do dollar tier challenges every month and Patreon feed updates. $5, there's reference photos and monthly Zoom calls. $10 is just an extra thank you to help my business sustain. If you want to check that out, I would very much appreciate it. And if you want to check out any of the work from the new collection or the prints or merchandise on my website, I will be adding prints of all the work from the show so you can get reproductions at lowered costs if you want to check that out. Thanks! In the last video I made, I showed the mock-ups in the first three canvases that I got started on. So some touches of footage from that, but mostly we're just going to go into the rest of the work. How the opening went, all the things involved in getting there, the different pieces from oil to acrylic and making frames. These three set the foundational tone for the rest of the body of work. It was all quite similarly pretty idyllic landscape based. Some of it based on exact references, not the clouds, not the first painting I did. A few of them I took liberties with, but first in this new group we're going to jump into is this serene pacific wave. I had to make a bunch of footage for the atelier for promotional materials, so I ended up filming a bunch of vertical videos for this next group of work that were put into different reels they made for me. They have a team member in India who put his original music behind it, so if you want to check out some of those on my Instagram, it's there. This is Aspen's that I started next. It was probably the hardest, most bane of my existence piece, but it went through different iterations. I took breaks from it. I worked on another piece in the middle of it, maybe a few other in the middle of it. And at the end I was happy, but uh, it went through a lot of time. It was so intricate. I didn't realize how intricate trees could be, but this and another one from the series ended up being really uh, time consuming just because they're so intricate. At the end I decided to take away the pathway. Maybe tell me what you think if you liked it better with or without it, but I thought it would be nice to just have it be shrouded and maybe it would balance the canvas a little bit to get rid of that side path. So this is a aspirin tree refuge with a million dots and lines. I'll show you next my intermission that I took on this piece. Today I wanted to drop a lesson from the easel about how to choose what you want to make. This week I was struggling with a painting of aspens and I decided to take a break by starting a new painting and I asked myself if I was going to be keeping this painting as a statement piece, an investment, what would I want on my wall? Sometimes it's good to just go back to the basics of what do you like, what makes you enjoy art in the first place, and what are your influences, and then just make stuff accordingly without getting too complicated about it. It gave me focus on what I wanted to pursue. So hopefully that helps. So after I got this view done of a tree in the harbor from in front of my mom's place, I went on to another Pacific Ocean painting. I took a few different shots at the Santa Monica Pier at sunset and three, I think, of them made it into wave paintings for this. There was really interesting colors, more rainbow-like colors in the reflections, and I always love making images of water or the sky where the colors aren't what you anticipate them being. That's something I really want to just develop more and more in my paintings is drawing out some of the colors you wouldn't expect to see so it's just a little bit more vibrant and magical than real life. I dotted in a lot of golden highlights and this one felt like the one with the most motion to me. It's a captured image of a wave actually crashing and I think you can really see that mid motionness to the shot. I took a group photo to send in a progress point check to WOW. We had one, two, three, 
We had eight pieces done so far, so here's me sitting eating Panda Express and considering the body of work very thoughtfully, me and Jack. It's good to have them all grouped together in the room. I It was the first time I was seeing the body together like this and I wanted to do it so I could kind of see what was missing, what else I wanted to add to the collection and how I could round it out so that it would be show ready. We had some more canvases to work on still. There was a goal of like 11 canvases in my mind. I think I put up 12 canvases and then some smaller works as well. This is a low tide scene from my home in Long Island. It's looking across the bay to the other shoreline and this is the tree one I was talking about with lots of intricacies. I painted so many branches for this. Moving on to a scene of the delicate arch here in Utah. This was taken at after midnight. It's a really pretty time to go explore. In the final touches, I wanted to add some interesting elements to the sky, make there be some radiating light captured around the moon, and dying in just any highlights the moonlight might put on to the scene. It's cool because there was such a strong cast shadow cast from the full moon that night, so it's got an element of nighttime and daytime. Next, this yellow water piece. I think of it as yellow, but it's obviously got a lot of colors in it, but I started out by canning the canvas completely yellow and then went on top with all of the water ripples and details. I still like to work on the floor sometimes. I'm borrowing this beautiful easel that I used in a lot of the clips, but I have my roots in floor sitting, so that's it came out. This was right before I was going into Wow Atelier to do an interview for more promotional material on Instagram, and I was so freaking nervous I can't even explain to you but that's why you gotta believe in yourself. We're taking small steps. The Atelier had the last artist, John Bell's work still installed, so I got to check out what the installation looked like, and then we headed to this back room where we did our interview, and I also displayed. This is a little rolling clip on the side of the interview. I think I'm talking about my mom, because that's usually what I talk about. <laughs> I was so nervous to be filming little clips, but I wanted some shots of the installation space so I could just map it out mentally as I was finishing works, and I was thinking about putting smaller works in these back rooms that I would finish at the end of the body of work. Here is me coming out from my interview. This is the little square where the shop is. The shop's right behind that taco place. I just finished doing interviews with the atelier and now I'm going back to my car. I was so nervous all morning to shoot this promotional stuff for the show, but it went really well. It was a great time and I got to get downtown, which I don't do that often. So anyways, I'm gonna watch traffic, bye. Moving on to my last canvas. I got this one laid down pretty quickly. I was going for the same reflected cloud, Rorschach clouds aesthetic that I did on the third piece I made, but on a much smaller version. More white in the clouds than the first. The first one was very blue toned. Blue had an interesting place in the show. I, I felt like it was one of the dominant colors I saw when I would look at the body of work and there's a certain energy that goes along with that. I wasn't expecting to see so much punchy blue in the show, but I like the effect. After this, I got a bunch of different frames to repurpose and I decided to go on top of these just home decorations with a little sanding and priming and then I could transform them into my own series. This series was popular, all three of the works sold at the show, but these are all the small works I wanted to get started on. This is the last oil piece I was working on because everything needed to dry. So the other two in those frames ended up being acrylic. Everything is really coming together. I just have to do all the final, final touches, like this edge, just cleaning it up. And then after that point, I need all of my oils to be drying and I have a couple of pieces I wanna make in acrylic to finish out the last of the work but I am getting so close and things are looking really nice just hanging out at the studio together right now. So I am more and more excited about it. So soon, so soon. Moving on to the acrylics, everything in oil has to dry. There was a point at which I had to abandon my brushes on the larger canvases and just keep going. I like to block in my scenes. Acrylic is so fun to work in. I just have big color blocks, it's drying immediately, and 
my usual practice of building up layers of details. I did use a little bit of pencil on the acrylic pieces, both this one and the next one. Sometimes it's nice for detailing and I hit it with a fixative when the paint is dry and it can hold the graphite onto the surface better that way. But finished off with different acrylic details and all these were varnished after they were dried. It's the harbor by my mom's house. And of course, another water one. I had a larger oval shaped black water painting that belongs to my boyfriend. I gave it to him for his birthday or Christmas. And I wanted to make something similar because I knew people would like it. But since it wasn't going to be for sale, I made a smaller black water piece and sold to a really nice fan in our community who came out to see the show. This one came together so quickly. There are certain pieces from the show that took me vastly longer than others. Of course this one's smaller so that's gonna happen but it's just one that rolled really quickly together and I was happy with it every step of the way. I had two rustic looking frames that I made tiny wrapped canvas boards to fit into custom and did a couple Long Island scenes. Actually, I'm not sure, that might be the Pacific on the one on the right, probably is. Yeah, the Pacific and the Long Island. So we got the East and the West Coast. And finally, a varied colored wave that I painted on a mirror. It is late Tuesday night and I installed tomorrow night. So I'm putting all the final touches on things. And right now I'm working on finishing off making these frames from plaques from Michael's and I'm mounting five by seven works inside of them. I have three of them done. I'm gonna make a few more, but I'll show you some of the process. I am very anxious and excited for the show and I just have a lot to get done. My sister comes into town Thursday. Tomorrow I need to photograph the entire body of work before we install. It's gonna be a big day getting ready for that so fingers crossed everything goes great but so far everything is going great so nothing but luckiness to report from here <laughs> it was installation night so i was really scared to film but i did get permission to have everyone on camera so I should have just gone for it a little mo more gung-ho but here's the work laid out. WOW was so helpful in every step of the way and they had installers on their team who hung all the work and did it so professionally. Aaron printed out different labels on stock card and it was coming together so nicely. I ended up cutting a couple studio relic type fast paced pieces that didn't fit as well, but I was really happy with our final selection. Show. So after I installed, I took a little video. This is a lot what opening night looked like, except there were a lot more people inside. It's a really nice feeling being outside at night in the city and looking through a glass window to see all your work displayed. Very encouraging and motivating. It's like the same we are at Opening night, Stacy took a walk through, thank goodness, because I did not really film except that first clip that's in the beginning of the video. And then we have tons of photographs of the opening to show you just to recap. And so I can say thank you to everyone who was involved and you can see the vibes. This is Wow Atelier and the co-founders. Aaron was who onboarded me for this project. Mike and Kennedy from Alibi was bartending and we had music live. The staff at WOW Atelier stayed through the night. They were so helpful along the way, making promotional materials, filming, talking with me, coordinating all the different parts of this event. Here's the work and the group. We had a lot of people coming through. I was so excited to have family there. My sister flew out from New York. I had like nine family members show up. My mom surprised me with and then of course all my friends and different people from our community that came up and showed up. I was so grateful to them. It was so cool to meet some of y'all in person for the first time. This was a really good moment for me, a good launching off point. I feel like it's bringing me the energy I want to bring in to this next year. So I'm so grateful for everyone and thank you for watching. Thanks everyone. Be sure to check out the work at robinsealark.com if you want to help support and check out my Instagram and Patreon. I would love to meet some of you on Patreon. So uh, yeah, 
I hope you enjoyed this video.